In the previous video on VSEPR, we introduced the, the eight different shapes which occur based on bond pairs and bond pairs and long pairs within molecules or ions. So here's just a quick recap of all these different uh, shapes, the names. So, so we have a linear shape, a trigonal planar shape, tetrahedral shape, trigonal bipyramidal, and an octahedral shape. And as you can see, then as you increase the number of bond pairs, then the bond angle decreases. When you have lone pairs present, then we um, have different bond angles and we have a different set of shape names. So with three bond pairs and one lone pair, you have a pyramidal shape. And <clears throat> if you have two bond pairs, two lone pairs, a V-shape, four bond pairs, two lone pairs, a uh, square plane shape. What we want to do in this video is to help you <coughs> decipher um, or deduce the name or the type of the shape presence based upon a chemical formula. And so um, we're just going to have a look now using this flow chart. So the first thing to do is to decide which group is the central atom in. Now, it, for A level, the vast majority of simple molecules you will encounter will have the central atom as the first atom in the formula. Um, or it'll be the only atom uh, the it'll be the only atom where there's one and there will be multiple of a, uh, of another atom. That's generally the rule of thumb to play. Okay. So calculating the shape of a simple molecule. So the first thing to do is is to say, right, which group is the central atom in? So if we're looking at the example of CF4, then we say carbon, oops, choose my pen. And carbon is in group four. How many atoms are bonded to the central atom? Well, the bottom central atom, I'll say that's C, um, we've got four fluorines. So we've got four atoms bonded to the fluorine. So the number of atoms bonded to the fluorine, that equates to our number of bond pairs. So if you add both of these two numbers together, number of atom bonded and the central group, uh, then you get 4 add 4 equals 8 electrons. If we now divide this by 2, this will give us the number of electron pairs, remembering that this is valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Okay, so we've got 4 electron pairs. Then, to deduce the number of lone pairs, you need to subtract the number of bond pairs from the number of uh, from the total number of electron pairs so we've got four electron pairs in total we have four bond pairs or four atoms bonded so therefore we have zero lone pairs then you would go back to the table and say well i'm looking for a shape which has got four bond pairs, zero lone pairs, go back. Uh, and if you go back to your sh table, then you will see that that shape is tetrahedral. So, so that's the, the rules you apply if you've got a simple molecule. However, if you've got an ion, then things are slightly more complicated. But we'll start off as we did previously. Uh, which group is the central atom in? Well, it's aluminium, so it's in group three. 
How many atoms are bonded to the central atom? Well, we've got four atoms bonded there. Okay. So that must mean we have four bond pairs of electrons. Now, if we add these two, um, if we add the central atom number together and the total number of uh, atoms bonded together, we get uh, three plus four, we get seven electrons. Now that should uh, ring alarm bells <clears throat> because we're always dealing with electron pairs. Now, at this point, when dealing with ions, you have to add an electron for each negative charge present or subtract an electron for each positive charge present. So in this case, we've got a one negative charge or a one minus charge. So therefore, we need to add one electron. Therefore, seven add one equals eight electrons. So now when we divide by two to get our total number of electron pairs, um, we now have an integer of four electron pairs. So eight divided by two equals four electron pairs. Now, here if we uh, do the same as previously, subtract the number of atoms from the number from the total number of electron pairs. Well, the total number of electron pairs is four. Number of bond pairs is four. Uh, so that means we've got zero lone pairs. So again, sorry. So in this example, it just so happens that we have uh, four bond pairs again, zero lone pairs. So this is a tetrahedral shape. Okay. Uh, and again, this slide is just kind of a summary of that. So feel free to pause this and read it at your leisure. When explaining a bond angle or a shape of a molecule in an exam question, you must always have these three parts. So, so, so it's one thing by being able to say, oh, this is a tetrahedral shape, or this is um, a pyramidal shape, or this is um, square planar, etc. But more marks, more marks tend to be awarded for the explanation. And so your explanation should involve these three parts, which is the first bit is state the number of bonding pairs and the number of lone pairs around the central atom. <clears throat> so it could be in the previous example, there are four bonding pairs, no lone pairs. Um, or there are only four bond pairs around the aluminium atom. Then if you've got bonding pairs only, you would state all bonding pairs, all bonding pairs repel equally. However, if you're in a situation where you do have some lone pairs, then you would say instead, all electron pairs repel, but lone pairs repel more strongly than bonding pairs. And that usually gets you a second mark. And then finally, um, the they, as in the electron pairs, get as far apart as possible to minimize the repulsion. So always have those three elements into your answer. Uh, okay, and again, this um, is just an example of both a positive and a negative ion and how that affects the shape. And then just a couple of notable um, aspects. So first is molecules with double bonds. For the purpose of shapes of molecules, double bonds are regarded as 
the same as single bonds. So therefore, carbon dioxide will still be a linear shape. And we'll say that we've got two bonding regions here. So two double bond pairs or two bonding regions. Therefore, it's a linear shape with a bond angle of 180 degrees. And we can see here with these examples of um, sulfate that if you've got four bond pairs and then you've got a tetrahedral, um, uh, so you've got four bond pairs, no long pairs, and a tetrahedral angle, a tetrahedral shape, sorry, and a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. For sulfur dioxide, now, this is a strange one in that you've got to base this on sulfur trioxide. So what we've done is we've replaced a bond or a double bond by a lone pair of electrons. And the rule of thumb is when you replace one electron one bond by a lone pair of electrons then you reduce the bond angle by approximately 2.5 degrees so therefore in sulfur trioxide you've got three equal bonding regions so sulfur trioxide would be 120 degrees um, bond angle so therefore you would expect this to be around about 117 117 and a half And here's your revision check. Can you do all these? Thank you for watching.